Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Behind me here, we have a freshly roughed in kitchen. We're going to go through and just kind of look at the different circuits that are present here and see how they did it. I didn't wire this personally, but it's always fun to see how people do it. Now, anything that is related to this project, uh, as far as materials and supplies for roughing in a kitchen, I'll try to link as much as I can in the description uh, below, as well as a couple of really good books that you should take a look at if you're thinking about doing some wiring yourself or you're an apprentice and you're learning about electrical. There's a couple of really great books that I've read that I'd highly recommend, and they'll be in the description as well. So let's take a look. We'll try to follow the circuits one by one as much as possible. These are the home runs going down to the basement. You can see all the wires are just kind of pulled back near the panel and they'll all be connected later. Oh my goodness. So I have not personally seen this before. This is really cool. This cable that we're looking at here is 1222 with ground. So this is actually like two Romax cables in one. We have a neutral wire, another neutral wire, and two hot wires as well as a ground wire. So this particular cable is doing both the dishwasher and the garbage disposal because it's two circuits in one. Now this is another circuit that is a 1222 cable and it is for the fridge and kitchen. So a dedicated circuit for the refrigerator I'm guessing and then one of the kitchen general circuits. And here we have a regular 12-2 circuit that's for the microwave. And this is likely the second kitchen receptacle circuit. That's another 12-2 cable. And this is an 8-3 with ground cable. So that means that it has three conductors inside of it that are current carrying and one conductor that's for ground. So this is gonna be for a 40 amp range circuit. And that is run up here through the floor joists if you run it through the floor joist, then you don't have to have a runner board to anchor it to. You can see how these uh, circuits are nicely spaced out so that they are not all run through one big hole. If they were, then that could potentially be a problem with uh, excessive heat being built up and the cables having to be derated. You can see how uh, just uh, two cables per staple are being used for the regular 12 two or 14 two wires and ultimately go up through the floor right over there. So these are all of those home run cables and they are ready to be wired into the main panel. So now that we've seen all of the main runs going down to the basement or the home runs, we'll go through and just kind of look through the circuits one at a time as they were pulled up stairs here. So the first one is this uh, heavy duty black wire that we determined was an 8 gauge, uh, so an 8-3 wire for a 40 amp uh, range receptacle. And that is mounted right down close to the floor on a double gang uh, metal box with a mud ring on it, as well as a 3 quarter inch cable clamp to connect it coming into the box with a staple within just a few inches of the box. There's also going to be a ground wire. Yep, you can see the ground wire there where the screw is, and they just grounded the wire as it came into the box, and it's ready for the receptacle to be installed. This wire right here comes up through this stud with these other wires, and then up to what is the microwave, and that's just going to be stubbed out of the wall, it appears, and then uh, hardwired, that would be my guess, that's why there's no box there right now. And we have our other 12-2 cable standard coming up right here. And that goes up into this uh, receptacle box. I'm assuming this is going to be serving the countertop. So it comes in and the wires are just rolled up inside of there. These are fiberglass standard nylon single gang boxes. But you can see that these are really deep. They're almost the full depth of the stud cavity for a 2x4 stud. You always want to get the deepest box as possible. And that comes down. It's stapled within eight inches of the box since it's non-metallic. Comes down and goes through this hole right here. Three quarter inch hole. Looks like they maybe have three wires going through there, but must be okay, I guess. And then it goes over here. Oh, okay, and then they did skip it. Okay, this is smart. So um, this box comes down, goes through over to there but it does not go into this box right here. And that's good planning because it continues and goes up into this receptacle box right here. And that allows every other receptacle to be powered from every other 
circuit. So that's really good planning. So that circuit just covers that receptacle box and that receptacle box, and that's it. So here's the first of our 1222 wires. And that comes up and goes across. We'll just follow it over here. Okay, it continues past and comes up into this receptacle box right here. So we've got a whole mess of wires in there because we have two circuits coming into this box. So two neutrals, two hots coming in on this thicker cable. And then uh, coming back out of there is a, just a standard 12-2 cable. Comes down, goes over, and back up into this box. And then that continues with another 12-2 cable down and back into this receptacle box right here to our final receptacle right there. So that's our other uh, general receptacle circuit. So that's what they're doing with that 12-2-2 cable. They bring it up, across, into that box right there. And then I'm guessing one of those two circuits is going to be dedicated for the refrigerator right here. I mean, look, fridge. So one of those uh, extra cables is going to be used for the refrigerator. And then the second circuit that's pulled into this box is not actually used in this box. That's just being sent back out to general receptacle there, there, and way over there. So really good planning and execution in my opinion. Looks great. And our final uh, 12 to 2 with ground cable comes up right here goes across and comes down into this box right here and this is for the dishwasher and disposal so this uh, double gang box right here is going to serve both the dishwasher and the garbage disposal so again good planning a little bit less labor in using that 1222 wire uh, let me know what you guys think about that do you use 1222 wire in order to use two circuits with one cable or do you just generally pull two standard cables i'm not sure what the cost difference is or if it saves money or not but kind of an interesting thing we have a 142 wire now coming up here that comes up and goes across and comes up and into this box here. And that's uh, basically must be our primary power that's powering these different lighting circuits. Not exactly sure what they have going on for the lighting, but fairly standard stuff and it looks to be all powered from one or two 15 amp breakers. So we have these uh, low voltage cables uh, stubbed out. I'm assuming where the cabinets are gonna be for under cabinet lighting. So those low voltage wires, there's one right there, there's one right here. And those come down here under the sink. These switches here then will control those under cabinet lights as well as some of the other lighting in here. And we'll switch 120 volt circuit down to there where they'll have a transformer plugged in that will then power the under cabinet lighting. Let me know down in the comments any observations that you made about this particular uh, wiring installation and what you might may or may not have done or done differently. Click on this playlist here if you want to keep learning about home wiring. And, or click on this video right here because YouTube thinks that you would like to watch that one next. Can you say thanks for watching? Thanks for watching. <laughs>